السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على السلام حي على السلام حي على الفلاح حي على الفلاح Uh, wait until your baby is weaned 
and then come back. So that means she has to nurse the baby. Uh, so then she came back. And uh, one report even said that, you know, she came showing that the baby is eating some bread. So that means it doesn't need the mother anymore. And so then how do we understand this story? Like that's, that's how the story has been told. We've heard it many times from our khutbas and so on. But now Dr. Sham looks at it from the point of view of the child. So this child will grow up. And how will this child experience the world? And what will this child know about the child, uh, his mother, about his circumstances of his mother, and, and the uh, mercy of the Prophet, peace be upon him. And this is one of the most important things that he stresses. As we know in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Surah Al-Anbiya, in the 107th ayah, We have not sent you except as a mercy to the world. That's our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah sent him as a mercy to the world. And we can see the mercy of the Prophet, peace be upon him, being extended everywhere to everyone. And so to the woman, but also to the woman's baby. And so, so this baby, for no fault of, uh, of its own, uh, should not be deprived of the mother, especially in the, in the early years. And the Prophet, peace be upon him, is giving time for the baby to be born and the baby to be weaned uh, before he does uh, anything. You see, so uh, the, the child then will grow up with this knowledge that the Prophet, peace be upon him, has been merciful to, to this baby uh, from the inception. And like this, the, the Dr. Alawadi cleverly uh, looks at stories one after another and looks at the impact of those stories on the, on the children. But he also talks a lot about how to train the children, not only to teach them the Quran and, and uh, the life history, but also to develop certain traits, like confidence, for example. Uh, so uh, he points out that uh, on one occasion, when, when Bilal al uh, delivered the first Adan, there were some boys playing, and boys about 10 years old, you know how we instigate each other and make fun of whatever is going on. Something could be serious and very meaningful, but they make fun of it. They're not bad boys, uh, that's just what boys do. And so the boys were making fun of the Adan. So he called them, and he asked them, okay, uh, recite the Adan now. So they were challenged because they remember the words and deliver the Adan. So they did it, each one. And uh, the Prophet, peace be upon him, was especially interested in one boy because he they displayed a good voice uh, for the Adan. The Prophet, peace be upon him, sent the others away and then he retained the one and trained him more to become a Muadid. And though young as he was, he was only 10 years old, the Prophet, peace be upon him, trained him to be a Muadid. So that way, the Prophet, peace be upon him, gave confidence uh, to this child. And that's one of the things that Dr. Alawadi is saying we should do. Give confidence to the children. Let them feel that they can do something. It's not always criticizing. No, you did that wrong. Uh, and uh, that's what we do. We criticize a lot. You're wrong. No, stop that. Don't speak like that. Don't put your hand like that. Don't walk like that. And don't sit like that. It's always like, don't, don't, don't. And, and you're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong. So if, all, if that's all the child is hearing, the child is not going to develop self-confidence, the confidence that says, yeah, I can do something. Uh, that, that confidence is what is essential if a child is going to be an entrepreneur, for example. So we look at the, the uh, successful entrepreneurs in the world, and we say successful only in material uh, uh, senses. You know, like the, the big giants, like the you know, Elon Musk and, and so on, we see that they are successful in the material world because they have that confidence. And by the way, just uh, yesterday I read an article in the Toronto Star uh, which uh, talks about some of these giants in, in the material world, uh, how their marriages and their home lives are failing. So, and, and the article was not written to criticize them, but only to suggest that if these people who are so successful in the business world, if they had applied the same principles that they apply in the business world to achieve success. If they had applied those same principles in dealing with their family situations, <laughs> their family situations would have been better as well. But you know, it turns out that this one is having the affair with that one, and has an, this one has a, a child outside of marriage with the other one, and this one, you know, they're divorced, and, and you know, all kinds of things like this. The, some of the most successful people in business. So what's happening is that they focus all of their energies on the business, and, and they know what to do to have a successful business, but in terms of family, they're failing. And a simple thing like communication. 
Communication is essential in a successful business. In fact, due to miscommunication, it has been estimated that a giant corporation may be losing something like $400,000 a day just because of miscommunication between people. So uh, it's a serious matter. But of course, in a family situation, now we're talking about parents and children, how to train your children, we have to communicate with the children. The Prophet ﷺ was building that self-confidence and he was using proper communication and positive uh, communication with, with the children around him. Now, the, the, a tribe came to the Prophet, peace be upon him, you can say a clan, not, not the whole tribe, a clan, a smaller uh, entity, came to the Prophet, peace be upon him, and the whole clan embraced Islam. But now, they, they didn't know how to recite the Quran. But, uh, you know, the, the children pick up things fast. So this boy who was only 10 years old among the clan members, he uh, learned enough of the Quran in the presence of the Prophet, peace be upon him, to the little time that they were there, so that the Prophet, peace be upon him, appointed him to go back and lead his people in the prayer. So he became the Imam of the prayer, he was only 10 years old. So the Prophet, peace be upon him, in this way, empowered the children and youth. And this is what we fail to do. We, we fail to empower the children and youth. This is why you will see that most of the Islamic organizations, they're held, headed by the uncles, and, and the youth don't know what to do with that. And the programming, and the whole ethos, the way things are done, it's not suitable to the youth. If the youth were in charge, they would have done things differently, they would have done things better. But we do not give them the opportunity. We do not allow them the scope to develop and grow and to exercise the abilities which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them uh, in order to do what they are doing successfully elsewhere, but they're not allowed to do in, in, in the masjid. So in the home as well, you need to empower the children. If you're a father, get your uh, teenage boys to lead you in the prayer. Let him lead because then he will have the confidence when he comes to the masjid and sometimes people are looking around who might lead the prayer, let him lead. You know, we are getting old, our memories are fading, sometimes we think we know the verse of the Quran, when we stand in the musalla, you know, the verse doesn't uh, uh, come to mind, and, and we make mistakes, but the youth, what they memorize is like program, like a recorder, they, they just, it just comes right out, you know, fluently and flawlessly. So we should empower them to lead us and to lead the prayer in the home so that they feel that this is their religion and they're in charge. They're not just followers, but they're leaders. They're movers and shakers. That's what we need to create. Give them that self-confidence. So the Prophet, peace be upon him, did that uh, with, with his companions. Uh, he uh, instructed them so that they can go and instruct others. And so we find that many of them who tur uh, turned out to be great teachers of Islam were very young with the Prophet, peace be upon him, while the Prophet was alive, but later on they developed and grew. Uh, one such person was Ibn Abbas. Ibn Abbas uh, was only 15 years old when the Prophet, peace be upon him, died. But he went on to be one of our greatest teachers. He's known as Turjuman al-Qur'an, uh, the, the uh, explainer of the Qur'an. Uh, and many of the tafsirs are written uh, largely uh, with the sayings of Ibn Abbas. So this verse means this according to Ibn Abbas. It, it, but it didn't, it didn't come to him just without any work. Ibn Abbas used to go, because he was young, he used to go uh, to the senior companions of the Prophet, peace be upon him, to find out from them, to learn from them one after another, uh, what uh, the various verses of the Quran mean. And it is said that the Prophet, peace be upon him, even prayed for him, saying, Allahumma faqihu fi deen wa alimhu ta'wil. Oh Allah, uh, 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 cause him to understand the religion and uh, teach him uh, the explanation of the, of the Quran. So the Prophet, peace be upon him, by praying for him, uh, gave him that confidence that he can go out and he can do this because he knows the Prophet, peace be upon him, prayed for him. So we should pray for our children and pray for them in their presence so they know that that's our dua for them. Don't put a curse on the children. Sometimes the parents are angry and, and they, they, you know, they say, you will, you're good for nothing. Well, if, you, if that's what you tell the children, you're good for nothing, they will grow up thinking that they're good for nothing and they won't try to achieve anything because they, they're convinced that they're good for nothing because who told them? You told them. You didn't mean that. You said it in anger, but it registered with them. 
Because just like they memorize things and they can repeat it flawlessly, they internalize things. So be careful what you say to them. Use positive self-talk. The Prophet ﷺ was very patient with these uh, young companions. And so later on, uh, they could reflect back on the mercy of the Prophet peace be upon him and do the things that he used to do. It is mentioned that uh, when the Prophet peace be upon him was with uh, a, a, a group of people, and his daughter Fatima came uh, to him, he would get up from the group. He would go greet her at the door. He would kiss her. And he would bring her to sit exactly where he was sitting. And when Fatima, uh, later on, had the opportunity, she would reciprocate. She do the, does the same thing. If her father enters, she would rise to meet him, kiss him, and bring him to sit where she was sitting. So you see, what goes around, comes around. It goes around and comes around. So the example we set with our children, that is what we are going to read in, in, in the future as well. And when, if we have parents with us, how we treat our parents, that's how, what our children will see, and they will hopefully treat us in a similar way as well. Well, of course, hopefully, because we're treating them well, and hopefully the children will treat us well as well. But it is no, we're not hoping in case we're bad to our parents, you know, we say, watch out, because the children, seeing how we treat our parents, may treat us in the same horrible way as well, or maybe even worse. We ask Allah Subhanahu wa for protection and to guide the children. Uh, one uh, of the young children was Anas radiallahu anh. He was uh, placed with the Prophet, peace be upon him, as an apprentice. You know, nowadays uh, children go to school to learn different trades. But uh, in those days, uh, if somebody wanted to learn a trade, a, a young boy would be placed with an elder. So the elder is already an expert in his trade, a boy would be placed to learn the trade. Uh, and he would do some little jobs, you know, he would bring the wrench or whatever while somebody is, uh, you know, doing the fixing. But he, he gets the experience, the exposure. And then once in a while he would say, I can turn that wrench, and then he will turn the wrench as well. He's an apprentice. So Anas one was placed with the Prophet peace be upon him by his mother. He was only 10 years old as an apprentice. What is he going to learn? He's going to learn the religion of Islam. And so he lived with the Prophet, peace be upon him, for the remaining 10 years of the Prophet's life. Until the Prophet passed away, he was there for only 20, Anas was. And uh, he lived uh, to a ripe old age, according to Islamic tradition, to the surprising 103, which would be exceptional for our present time, and for that time would have been more exceptional. Nonetheless, that's how it is in the tradition. But because he lived a long time, and he was able to transmit much information about the life of the Prophet, peace be upon him, and his experience with the Prophet So he relates that when he was still a boy, in the presence of the Prophet, sometimes the Prophet sent him on an errand, and he would forget what the Prophet, you know, because he would see boys playing, he would go play with them, and he forgot that he was on an errand. And time would pass, the Prophet, peace be upon him, would go out looking for him, and he said the Prophet, peace be upon him, would come, hold him gently on his neck, and address him as Onais, which means little Anas. So in Arabic, we have words go like this. Uh, the words are slightly slanted. So Anas becomes Onais, which means little, little Anas. Uh, so uh, that means the Prophet peace upon him addresses him lovingly and reminds him of where he was supposed to go. And he said, the Prophet peace be upon him never rebuked me. He said, the Prophet never said the word of to me. Uh, of, you know, from the Quran. Where the Quran says that if you have old parents, do not say of to them and do not repulse them. Of is something, that, an expression in Arabic which means that I feel like some disgust. I, 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 you know, I'm not happy with what's going on. So that's of. So he said the Prophet peace be upon him never said of to him. Imagine in 10 years. Imagine you have a teenager in your presence. How are you not going to show, show some contempt? For some of the things that they come up with, some of the things they, they do and they say, and uh, but, but the Prophet peace be upon him was like that towards Anas. He didn't say oath to him. And, and Anas further said that the Prophet peace be upon him never struck anyone outside of battle. In battle, obviously, swords are you know exchanged. One has to uh, defend oneself in the heat of battle. So then, yeah, yes. But outside of battle, domestic situations, no. The Prophet, peace be upon him, never struck anyone. Not a woman, not, 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 not a child, not a servant, not even an animal. 
That was our prophet, peace be upon him. He was truly sent as a mercy to the world. And, and that mercy was not only in the fact that he delivered the message uh, to people which will save them in the life hereafter, but he was kind to everyone. And nowadays we talk about following the sunnah of the Prophet peace be upon him as if that only means following certain rules and regulations in the religion. But the characteristic of the Prophet peace be upon him we fail to internalize. When we say that Allah is Ar-Rahman, He's Ar-Rahim, our scholars say we should try to uh, get those characteristics in ourselves. Yes, we should be like merciful like Allah. We should be forgiving like Allah. Now what about the Prophet peace be upon him? We are his followers. And to follow him not only means to do the, the little things that he did, but it means also to follow his character. He was merciful to people and we should be merciful as well. So are we merciful to the children? Will the children be able to remember us and say, yes, this is what my father was. This is what my mother was. This is how kind they were to me, and they will be kind to others in, uh, in, in, in retrospect, or, or you know, that's what they will do in turn. Uh, Anas radiallahu anh said that when the Prophet, peace be upon him, passed by a group of boys playing, and the Prophet would say salam to them. And Anas, in his old age, used to do the same. So when people asked him, why are you giving salam to the boys who are playing? He said, the Prophet, peace be upon him, used to do that when I was there playing with the boys. Anas said that he had a younger brother. And the brother had a pet bird. And the bird died. And the Prophet, peace be upon him, took the time to ask this boy about his bird, like what happened to the bird. Showing concern and care for the loss that this boy is experiencing when his pet bird died. Imagine that. The Prophet, peace be upon him, was the busiest man in the world. There were battles being fought one after another. There was Badr and Wahal and Khandaq. There was Fatful Makkah. There were even battles after that. There were campaigns. There were so many things happening. There were marriages. There were divorces. People are coming to him for counseling. People that need their questions answered. He was the busy man, busiest man around, but he took the time to show concern for that boy who had lost his pet work. So in this way, the Prophet peace be upon him, left a deep impact on the young people around him. And so later on, they will continue the religion with love and, and with that understanding that the Prophet peace be upon him left them with. The Prophet peace be upon him was concerned not only for the boys, but he also paid attention to the girls. His granddaughter was very young, and so young that she didn't understand, uh, you know, what we do when we pray. So when the Prophet peace be upon him made sujood, she went and sat on the head of the Prophet peace be upon him. But uh, he was not annoyed with that, he just got up with her on the shoulder. And uh, you know, so he would have her, uh, he would, he'd be holding her while standing up. When he's ready to bow, you know, he would put, uh, uh, so he would, yes, he would have her on, on his shoulder while, while he's still standing. When he's ready to bow, that's when he would take her down and hold her close and bow and prostrate. When he got up again, she was back on his shoulder. That is the Prophet, peace be upon him. And that illustrates that in the prayer, we can have some movements which uh, are, are not so uh, such that they are outlandish. Like as if you don't care about the prayer, you're just doing something extraneous. Yes, you care about the prayer, and you also care about your child. Child is young, the child needs some care. Let them see that you are praying, and the praying is something enjoyable for you and for them. Let it not be, okay, because I'm praying, okay, you go on the side. I don't care for you now, I'm, I'm just praying. So now, what impression is that going to leave on the child? That prayer is something like, I don't like when my parents pray, because they, they, they leave me alone, I'm neglected, I want my parents, I love my mommy, and uh, I want to hug my mommy. And uh, it, it, so, so they're not going to like the prayer. So let them see that the prayer is something you enjoy, and it's something that they enjoy as well, even though they're not actually praying at the moment. But you know how they are, they'll copy you, you make sujood, they'll make sujood. And then maybe the next minute they're going off and playing, they don't finish the prayer with you. And then they go to another age uh, where they know all of the movements, but they go through so very quickly, you're wondering, did they recite anything? 
He said, I'm up and down. What did you recite? But don't be critical. It's all a phase. They're going through, teach them. Stop them and, and as they grow older, let them leave the you in the prayer. So now you'll be sure that they are uh, doing it right. In your presence. Without being a police over them. But by giving that em empowerment to them, you are actually placing them in the position where they will demonstrate to you that they know how to pray and they're doing it right. My brothers and sisters uh, in Islam, there's much more we can say. And uh, many more stories we can narrate uh, for, about the children in the presence of the Prophet, peace be upon him, and how they continued Islam after him, after they were trained uh, by him. Uh, let us not neglect the children around us, the children in our own household, the children in our masjid. Let us not be so critical. Uh, a woman came here and complained to me that, uh, you know, she was going to a mosque and they would be the older uh, women who are always like, you know, fix your hijab. No, it should be like this. No, you should stand like this, and so on. So, uh, people don't like that. They get turned away from the masjid when they find that people in the masjid are so critical and so judgmental. Don't be so judgmental and critical. Embrace people with love. If you want to teach them something, teach them by way of, uh, of example. As the uh, grandsons of the Prophet, peace be upon him, are reported to have done, they saw an old man, he's making wudu, but he's not doing it right. And uh, so, they said to him, uncle, uh, like, we, we, between us two brothers, we, we have like a dispute about how to make the wudu correctly. So we want to do it, so you can tell us who is doing it the right way. So each one of them did it the same way, the right way. <laughs> and so then the man said, you both did it right. But by in, 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 so the whole drama was for the purpose that the man could see how is the correct way to make the wudu without being critical of him. Because if you told him, uh, uncle, you're doing it wrong, he's going to say, who are you little boys in diapers to tell me I'm doing it wrong? I'm doing it right. You know, you'll insist, probably. So to avoid that confrontation, you find a way to appeal to his psychology and to demonstrate the right way. Let us use that with our children as well. Positive reinforcement. Help them to be the good citizens, uh, the Muslim citizens you want them to grow up to be by using that kind of positive uh, talk and uh, build their self-confidence and uh, give them that love for the religion that you already have. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to do exactly that. Wa akhiru da'wan and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. And alhamdulillah, wa ashadu wa la ilaha illa Allah, wa anna Muhammad wa Rasulullah. Ya ayuha ladhina amanu tukwa Allah, ahaqba tukaachihi, wa la tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun. Ya ayuha nasu taku rabbakum alladhi khalaqakum min nafsi wahida, wa khalaqa minha zawjaha, wa bata minha minhu ma rajalan kathira wa nisa'a. Wa taku Allah alladhi tasa'aluna bihi wal arham, inna Allah kana alaykum rakiba. Ya ayuha ladhina amanu tukwa Allah, وَقُولُوا قَوْلًا سَرِيدًا يُسْلَحْ لَكُمْ أَعْمَالَكُمْ وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمْ وَمَنْ يُطِعُ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ فَقَدْ فَازَ فَوْزًا عَظِيمًا My brothers and sisters uh, in Islam, uh, if you want to know more about that topic, uh, know that my, my whole khutbah was based on this book entitled Children Around the Prophet, uh, peace be upon him, how Muhammad sallallahu raised the young companions. And uh, if you're not so much into reading, uh, you can also get the book by Dr. Hisham uh, al awadi in video form. He's done an eight-series uh, lecture uh, based on the book, uh, and it's available on YouTube for free. So uh, do pay attention to that, or in some other way, uh, do uh, develop the skills that are needed in today's society, uh, the skills that are necessary for raising our children and to be the best Muslims that they can be. My brothers and sisters in Islam, our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu was a mercy to the world. And uh, the least we can do is to ask Allah subhanahu wa to bless him for all of his struggles, all of his efforts, as a result of which we can probably say today we are Muslims. Allah tells us in his glorious book, in Allahu malaikatu wa yusalluna ala nabi, ya ayu ala dina amun wa sallu alayhi wa sallim wa taslima. And we say in response, Allahu ma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ala Muhammad, kama salli ala Ibrahim wa ala 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 ala Muhammad kama barakta ala Ibrahim wa ala ala Ibrahim wa ala ala Ibrahim wa ala ala we ask you, Ya Rab, Ya Rahman, Ya Kareem, we ask you to forgive us and have mercy on us, Ya Rab, O oh Allah, we come to you on this blessed day of Friday with many sins, Ya Adal Jalali Wal Ikram, we ask you to forgive us our sins, Ya Rab, for you are Tawab, you are, uh, you are uh, a Rahman, 
and uh, you are uh, al ghafar Ya Rabb al Alameen. Oh Allah, Ya Rabb, we ask you to have mercy on the entire world, Ya Rabb. Oh Allah, we ask you to protect the, the environment, the plants, uh, the plants, the animals, the people, Ya Rabb. Oh Allah, we ask you to protect and help all of those who are suffering from the horrors of war and from injustice everywhere, Ya Rabb. Protect the people of Palestine, uh, of Syria, Iraq, of Yemen, uh, the Oromo people, people of Sudan and uh, Somalia. We ask you, Ya Rabb al Alameen, to protect the people who are in uh, China suffering, Ya Rabb. Oh Allah, especially the Uyghur Muslims, Ya Arhamar Rahimeen, protect the people of Burma and Kashmir. Ya Arhamar Rahimeen, Oh Allah, Ya Rabb, you know the people who are suffering everywhere and we ask you to have mercy on them and protect them and remove their oppressors from above them, Ya Rabb. Oh Allah, we ask you to protect the people of Pakistan who are suffering from a recent flood, Ya Adal Jalali Wal Ibram. Oh Allah, we pray for the newborn babies of our Imam Ilyas, Ya Rabb al -Alamin. Oh Allah, we ask you to give them a growth, Nabatan Hassan and Ya Rabb al -Alamin. Oh Allah, help them to grow up into the Muslim citizens that we would like to see them be, Ya Arham al Oh Allah, we ask Ya Arham al Rahimin to have mercy on all of those who have passed away from among the Muslimin and Muslimat, Ya Rabb. Allahumma fill al Mu'minin wa al Mu'minat wa al Muslimin wa al Muslimat al Ahiyyati minhum wa al in the Kasabi on Karibu Majibu Dawat, Bir Rahmatika Ya Rahman Rahimin. Oh Allah, we ask you especially to bless the uncle of uh, our young brother Yahya who passed away, Ya Rabb al Alameen. Oh Allah, bless his soul, Ya Rabb. Oh Allah, have mercy on him and give him genital for adults and give patience to, to his loved one to bear the loss of his part in Ya Rabb al Alameen. Oh Allah, we ask you to heal all of those who are sick, Ya Rabb. Allahumma ashfihim. Oh Allah, we ask you to accept from us this humble du'a. We ask you, our Rabb, to make our children, Allah, Muhammad, and Quran. Oh Allah, make the children of this community the leaders of the world, leaders of the Ummah of our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and of this country, Ya Rabb. Rabbana taqabbal minna inna ka anta sami wa alim wa tawa alayna ya maulana inna ka anta tawabur rahim bi rahmatika ya arhamar rahimin. As you stand up for your prayers, our volunteers will come through the roads to receive their donations for the sake of Allah, for the upkeep of this masjid. Please donate generously for the sake of Allah. Now the Sambhala bless you all. Uh, the room behind you has now been uh, completed, but alhamdulillah, we paid the contractor for his work. And uh, that all came from your donations. Thank you for that. And today we had the pleasure of using it for one of the intended purposes. I had a, uh, a uh, private talk uh, with uh, some of the senior students in our day camp. The day camp is ending today. And uh, I wanted to equip them to go out into the world and to know about some of the things which are out there that they will be faced with, like questions regarding LGBTQ issues, for example. So uh, the room was private for us, and we had uh, a good chat and uh, it's working. So uh, thank you all for uh, making all of that possible. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you all and uh, give you barakah in your earnings so a little bit will go far, you'll never be short of anything, either in this life or in the life hereafter. Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar, Ashadu Allah, Ilaha illallah, Ashadu Anna Muhammad Rasulullah, Hayyal As-Salah, Hayyal Al-Falah, Qad Qamat As-Salah, Qad Qamat As-Salah, Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar, La Ilaha illallah. Allahu Akbar. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Maliki Yawm Al-Din Iyaka Na'bud wa Iyaka Nasta'in Ihdina Surat Al-Mustaqim Surat Al-Ladina An-Na'amta Alayhim Ghayr Al-Maghlubi Alayhim Wal-Adhalim وَلَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ مِنْ سُلَالَةٍ مِنْ طِينٍ ثُمَّ جَعَلْنَاهُ نُطْفَةً فِي قَرَارٍ مَكِينٍ 
ثم خلقنا النطفة علقة فخلقنا العلقة مضغة فخلقنا المضغة عظاما فكسرنا العظام لحما ثم أنشأناه خلقا آخر فتبارك الله أحسن الخالقين ثم إنكم بعد ذلك لميتون ثم إنكم يوم القيامة تبعثون الله أكبر سمي الله لمن حمله الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغلوب عليهم ولا الضالين في بيوت أذن الله أن ترفع ويذكر فيها اسمه يسبح له فيها بالغدوم والآصال رجال رجال لا تلهيهم تجارة ولا بيع عن ذكر الله وإقام الصلاة وإقام الصلاة وإيتاء الزكاة يخافون يخافون يوما تتقلب فيه القلوب والأبصار ليجزيهم الله أحسن ما عملوا ويزيدهم من فضله والله يرزق من يشاء بغير حساب الله أكبر سمي الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله Good to see you always uh, and I look forward to seeing you again next week inshallah if not before that uh, to let you know today uh, we end our uh, summer day camp for this year and uh, this evening we'll be having a graduation ceremony here and um, in the meantime, I ask you all to continue being generous to this place of worship. Please donate for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. On your way out, our volunteers will receive your donations by debit or credit card. Uh, please uh, continue to donate for the sake of Allah azza wa jal. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect you all, bless you all, and all of your loved ones. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.